Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen to this and nothing else, just this forever and ever and ever No, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes now the point behind these particular recordings the let me bore you to sleep is for me to bore you to sleep I realise it sounds quite obvious but um, that's you know, that's pretty much it. Although it can also be uh, company, you know. I can I can be a friendly voice on the computer or on the phone that you can listen to. You know, most days I try and record a, an hour or something. Sometimes I'm talking about things out of a book. Other times it could be the outlay of a house that I once lived in. You know, it could be various different things. And I think... I don't know what number I'm up up to. I think it's about 215 or 216 episodes of this podcast. Which is way more than I expected to be making. I mean, even with the deep sleep whisper hypnosis podcast, I think... I've done about 145 of those. Uh, The relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. I did episode 55 yesterday. Um, The 66... Episodes on the self help and self development podcast, and they, 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 they kind of range from nail biting to uh, helping with uh, tinnitus and uh, eating, and all you know, various different kinds of things there. Um, so that's that's quite a good podcast. The relaxation podcast, relaxation hypnosis is. I think there's about 185 of that on that one. And the sleep hypnosis, I think I've done about 25. The sleep hypnosis weekly. So it's quite a few uh, Yeah, quite a few floating about I'm not floating literally But uh, that I've produced And uh, I think I think I produced three the last two days and it was really weird tonight I was I had my dinner so I had something to eat you know food chomp 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 mm, swallow yum yum and I I laid back in my chair my big black squeaky chair and 
I was listening to a video and it was an audio book and I thought on YouTube so I just listened to it I think it's called As Man Think of Thinkest or something by something Alan anyway I'm listening to that and it's I think it's supposed to last about an hour and 45 minutes not that I necessarily was going to listen to it for an hour and 45 minutes and then I fell asleep like proper asleep like with dreams and stuff you might be thinking what? dreams? yeah yeah dreams and when I woke up I was about 40 minutes into, or no, about 50 minutes into the next video. Like, wow, and it was nearly half past two. So I'd, you know, it's like, wow, I've been asleep for over, over two hours. Or nearly two and a half hours, or whatever it's like uh what's going on there so I almost feel like I've missed part of the day because it's now 3.25 in the morning and I've only started <sighs> only starting to make my first recording And after I got up, I woke up at about one thirty yesterday afternoon, and I I have I've done a fair bit, you know. I've been working on my website today, but I didn't go back to bed. So I didn't have my little little nap later on, <sighs> which is why I'm so tired now. Ugh. Sometimes I like to just lay down and maybe listen to a, you know an audio book or something, and just lay in my bed. I just I just enjoy laying down. It's nice, but. Um, been working on my website and it's it's one of those websites that's never ever gonna be completed ever it's just a, it's a it's a continuous build just for the simple fact that every time I make a new recording then that needs to be added to the website so it's you know it's constant so there's I'm going to be putting some tags in there into the website so everything's categorised but it's by podcast now I want to I want to do tags so people can find stuff easier so like for example have a tag for tinnitus have a tag for nail biting just so it makes it a little bit easier to find stuff instead of going through the self development and you know so I won't have a tag for relaxation because basically there's so many relaxations things on there that you can search through them and if I put relaxation in then I'll have hundreds and hundreds of things come up which defeats the point of searching for stuff really doesn't it I think so that's what I'm going to do but <sighs> at the moment I'm in the process of changing each page by adding an introductory block which is already 
pre-prepared and I've nearly done it now I've nearly gone through the 1050 odd pages I'm down to the last probably 50 I imagine so I'm nearly nearly finished on that when I have done that I'm going to look at the tags and put together there might not be huge amounts of tags but enough so th you know there'll be a block of tags it put a bit like do you remember doesn't seem to be about so much now it used to be um go to a website in the past and it'd be a a block of words which were tags but they'd be kind of cloudy like in clouds because I used to have that on previous websites so this time I'll just have the you know maybe 30 40 tags which you can click on alphabetical easy to find so A could be for um, abacus if I had a recording based on the subject of abacuses and B could be a recording about Brexit if, if I had such a recording C what word begins with C country if I, I could if I had a, a, a recording about country countryside or trees and stuff but I don't really make those kinds of recordings mind you mind me if I had tags for these let me bore you to sleep recordings I possibly could have tags and it I could put down A for aliens and B for beavers and C for cockatoos and D for driving and C, D, E, E for evil Knievel F for Freddo is it Freddo bars? you know those little chocolate bars Freddo the frog I used to eat them when I was well when I wanted to, wanted to eat them but because some of them I think they're called Freddos and they used to be I think they used to be five pence and then they went up to 10 pence and now they're about 30 pound so the I still remember I used to haven't had them for a long time but some of them were just chocolate some of them had were chocolate with uh, like toffee that melted toffee inside and they were yummy and I remember back in 1991 I was living yeah I was alive then and I you know there's some people might be listening here that weren't alive back then and they're thinking 1991 was the planet even here then yes it was 1991 how many years is that 91 92, 93, 94, 
95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. So that's 10 years. 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. So, yes, yeah, only 28 years ago. That's all. It's only 28 years ago. And I was 50 then. It's amazing, being 94, it's quite nice. I didn't realise, I sound, I sound quite good for 94, don't I? 94, it's alright being 94, unfortunately, my body's turning to dust. But other than that, it's okay, it's fine. So, 94... So 91, back in 1991, I used to walk home from work. And I remember going into that shop. It was, uh, I'm saying that shop like you should, like you know what shop that is. Well, of course you're not gonna know, although it's all changed now. But I used to go into this corner shop and it basically was, well it was a news agents, it was groceries, I don't know whether or not they sold alcohol, whether they were an off license. I don't know. Can't remember. Because I didn't really drink alcohol at that, at, during those days. But there was an, alf, uh, an alcohol, alcoholic shop. There was uh, an off license up the end of the road. Because that's a good thing about living in London. Generally, you're never that far away from somebody. So I got this this shop, and I was living in this house. And it was, I'm trying to think of the name of the road. I can't remember. I do remember, I just don't want to tell you. No, I can't remember. I think, I think it was Tomato Soup Road or something. And it was a cul-de-sac. And believe it or not it was just basically behind it was a graveyard but an old graveyard not one of these shiny fangled ones but an old one like old old I never got to go in it Mind you, actually, I did. I, I did climb over the wall once to look for my uh, land landlady's cat. They got stuck down a hole. Because 
she had this big high wall in the back of her house and it was quite a small little area I think it would be quite nice it was big enough for a couple of people to sit down with deck chairs and you know enjoy the sun and the quiet because it was quite a little not quite a little area considering it's London living next to a graveyard is fairly peaceful and it was quite ironic I remember looking out the car because that used to be when I looked out the window of my bedroom that's all I could see was the graveyard and I remember sitting there and one of the neighbours had a song on repeat and it was Gabriella dreams can come true or dreams do come true I don't know if you remember Gabriella she was a singer and she was a pirate uh, I think she I don't know if she was a part time pirate but she she was a singer as well and she had a parrot on her shoulder and stuff and she used to sing this dreams can come true blah, 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 blah. you know you got to have them you know you got to be strong dreams can come true blah, 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 blah. see that bit there it sounds like I've forgotten the words but I never knew what the words were because she was a mumbling pirate I think she, it might have been pirate talk like special pirate language or something so um, and it was kind of a weird thing because this was a I think it was a Saturday morning it was sunny and I'm thinking, where's this music? What, what, what is this? What is this? It's it, this weird sound. Because I've never heard music before. But having that with the view of the graveyard was a weird, weird emotion. Well, it wasn't emotional, but it was, I was just a bit, a bit it's quite funny really I suppose but it's great there's a big old area of ground and further up so um, if you go around the block so come out the house and go around and then you go past the there's some houses and then you go past there's the corner shop the news agents on the left and then you can turn left down another road go down you have to go down a huge distance and then there was the, the, the new graveyard although it wasn't new it was probably about 300 years old or 400 years old but it was the newer one I'm not even sure if that one was used anymore but it was newer actually I think it must have been used because we had the public had access to that one so I think it was still being used and I used to go in there sometimes and look at the gravestones and look at people you know, like from three four hundred years ago it just made me think if this is the new graveyard with people from like 1700 and whatever how old are the gravestones in the old the old one and I remember I was with Andre not my boy Andre the ferret not my son but Andre who Andre was named after and we 
this is probably like 94 time we climbed over I don't know if we were drunk or something but we climbed over the wall into the graveyard because it was locked at night and either we climbed over or he climbed over and I just left him and he couldn't get back out again that might have been what's hap what happened I forget because we at the time yeah at the time we may have been living together in the same house yeah possibly oh, I forget I forget maybe it was 95 no it would be 90, definitely 94 because he went back to Ireland in 94 about August time yeah was it September I lose track I don't know but this house that I lived in it was kind of weird it was a cul-de-sac so it's really go down there and it's almost like leaving London in a way and it was quiet it was quiet until a children's home opened up next door and it wasn't so quiet but uh, having lived in a children's home when I was little I had no problem with it but my landlady wasn't too pleased because she was used to being silent most of the time and uh, so I had to, um, I moved in there I used to go in and there was a conservatory at the front which had flowers I think there was flowers in the garden and there wasn't much of a garden but it was a little bit of area in front of the building go in go through the conservatory and then there is all these flowers in there and then turn the, the front doors on the left so open that up go in there it was quite dark because there was no light literally the door didn't let any light in the front door and it'd walk a little bit to get through that door and then my landlady lived but well she didn't live but she she spent a lot of time in the front room which was a nice room but she had that door sometimes she had the door closed sometimes she had the door open sometimes it would be like halfway closed quarter way closed it, it depended and so there wasn't a lot of light in that area and then as you walk through the hallway was fairly empty and it was like a big not big but like a square bit of area and then to the left so if you walk up to the left there was a little dining area of a table which I never sat at I never sat down there I don't think she did either sort of a untouched area and then there was a kitchen which was a fair size it was it wasn't like a big house it was but two three bedroom house but it was um, it wasn't small you know it was a decent size 
and I think the oven, <clears throat> the oven, and the I can't remember if it was gas or electric, the oven. But that was on the right hand side. Pretty sure that the pretty sure that the the sink was on the left and I don't recall the decor there was cupboards in the kitchen just like most kitchens and her bedroom led off of the kitchen on the right hand side because she had uh, she needed a walking stick to get around uh, so she lived on the on the bottom floor and so that was her bedroom and then walking through another door on the left was the bathroom that had a bath and a shower and a toilet and a sink and a mirror walls, ceiling, floor, you know, and then if you come out of the bathroom, there was another door ahead, which was the, it was a door, not a, not, it wasn't a door made of, didn't look like a head, so it was just a door that was a head of me, um, and that led to outside, to the little a little courtyard but it was like a tiny little bit of area but I imagine because I never I never used to go out there much I imagine it was quite nice if it had been my house to have sort of sat out in the sun it might have been quite nice I don't know there might have even been a shed out there don't remember and a washing line I think there was a washing line oh. and there was trees and stuff in you know in the, the ground next to where she lived and what else yeah I think Yeah, trying to get my bearings around it. That's, I really went out there, but she had about seven hundred cats that uh, used to live there. So she'd be opening the door at the back and squeaking. When I say squeaking, she had very. You know, it's like with Andre, like, I go, Oh, my little baby. Oh, my little Andre. Oh, I love you so much. Oh. I kind of seem to put on a different voice sometimes. And she was like that with her cats. Like she'd like talk like this to us. So you know, normally you talk like this. But when she called her cats, it'd be like, Triggy, Triggy, and Patrick, will you come home in Patrick, it's, it's time, Patrick. That'd be, oh, twiddly dum. So she had like a different call for each one. And, uh, I kind of now know what it feels like to live on a farm. You know the people that live on a farm, they get woken up by the, uh, they get woken up every morning by a cock. Um, going cock a doo doo like in the garden or in, in, the, in the farm. And I never liked the idea of getting woken up by a cock. Just, I, I'm not a big fan of alarm clocks, but the, 
you know, I did, I did, like, like, every day, it's like, oh, um, and I've been on retreat, went on a retreat once, well, more than once, but it was actually on a farm, and there was a cop there, there was just, well, there was more than one, there was quite a few of them, but, you know, making, uh, Lots of sound producing a lovely bunch of sound, which was lovely. Yeah, wonderful. And so I kind of had that with well, obviously my landlady, I'm not saying she was a cock because she, she was human. But she sounded a bit like, like a cock. And sometimes, like the, the way she used to yell and go, what? <coughs> Twiddles. And yeah, I don't know. I can't really do it loud, can I? Because I'm doing a, a sleepy session. But it's nice to get woken up by her quite a lot, which was lovely. Not so much during the week because I'd be up before her. I'd be going to work, but on on weekends, you know, especially Sundays, oh, just what I needed. Yeah, I needed to be woken up at eight o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah, thanks, landlady. You makes it all worthwhile. I, I think you should put your rent up for offering that cock service. Early morning wake up call. Cockadoodle-doo. It's very selfish, isn't it? Imagine just waking up and thinking, oh, I'm now going to wake every single other person up on this farm. Cock-a-doodle-doo. 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 Right. You'd think that all the other animals might get together and kind of gang up. Just like say, look, like at the very least an intervention. Like all the pigs, the cows, the goats the squirrels, you know, the rhinos, just all come in and say, listen, listen, mate, we appreciate that you wake up early. You're a morning person. Fair enough. But why, why, just because you're up doesn't mean that we need to be up. You don't, you don't find me. I, I'm a night person. That was the owl. I'm a night person, said Mr. Owl. Well, I don't come up to you and wake you up at night, do I? And the cock said, well, actually, you do howl. You do go cuckoo, cuckoo, quite a lot. He said, no, that, that's a pigeon. He said, no, it's you. No, that was a pigeon. And the cock said, no. Admittedly, it might have sounded like a pigeon, but that was my impression of you. It might not have sounded like you, but that was my impression of you. When I was doing that impression right then, I was thinking of you. Wasn't thinking of a pigeon, wasn't thinking of a blue tit, wasn't thinking about a pizza. I was thinking about you. An owl, Mr. Owl. And he says, oh, I know I'm an owl, but I'm not actually Mr. Owl. You know, I do have a name. He said, okay, sorry, Robert. Robert the Owl. No, just Robert will do. I don't call you Pod the Cock. 
just call you pod. By the way, what is pod? That's not even a real name. Well, it's not my fault. I didn't I didn't name myself, did I? I didn't ask to be named pod. Who would? Good point. But anyway, why would why would you call me Mr. Owl? That's basically saying that all owls look the same. That, my friend, is prejudice. Ah, Pod said. You do look quite similar, though. He said, no, we don't. We've got, there's loads of different varieties of owls. There's the golden eagle owl, there's the, the snow owl, there's lots of different ones. And Pod said, yeah, however, they're not here, are they? What do you mean they're not here? Well, I don't recall called lately seeing a snowy owl around here but what I do recall seeing is you and and other owls that look like you Oh, yeah. And I'm sure if I was in uh, Alaska or wherever snowy owls abode, I would probably only see snowy owls. And probably wouldn't see you. So kind of therefore. You do kind of look alike. And Robert the Owl he said look. It's almost like you prepared that speech. It's like what, what did you spent the last six days writing that out preparing it just for today and Pod the Cock said nope and he quickly hid quickly hid his notebook down his underpants and then the, the squirrel popped up jumped onto uh, Robert the Owl's top of his head and said now that's the end of that scene let's go back to the house that Jason lived in let's talk about the house now can we I think we've had enough of these weird weird stories and conversations that didn't really happen can we just go back to the house please can we you haven't told everyone about your bedroom yet. Go on, go and tell everyone about your bedroom. Yeah, it'd be lovely, go on. So I kind of decided, all right then. So the one route, the one bit I did miss out of the house was as you walk towards the kitchen, there was a doorway on the right which led to a staircase but it wasn't a proper door it was almost like a cupboard door not made of proper wood if that makes sense it wasn't like a proper door it was just I don't know how to explain it but it opened. It was a door. I mean, technically, you could have a door um, 
made of spaghetti and it'd still be a door dried spaghetti stuck together with a few orange bits added it's still a door but it's not really a door so I open it up of constantly getting bits of sp spaghetti on me it was annoying and it was this winding stairs winding to the right so we go up and then turn to the right there was a light switch which is always useful if there's a light it's the best way to turn it on really and without the light switch couldn't see anything unless the door was open of course and so I turn the light switch on and I go upstairs and there was two doors one directly ahead of me and one to my right my bedroom was the one to the right so that's the one that I usually went into and I went in opened the door you know what I don't even remember if I had a key to the door I don't remember genuinely do not remember um, it's not whether or not I had a key to the door I didn't have to keep climbing in the window what I mean is I don't know if there was a key if there was even a lock on the door anyway I used to go in there because that's where I lived and I remember I don't really remember but I have a vague I remember the the facts rather than the uh, I remember moving in there and I don't know if I had a television which I probably didn't at the time ah. But what I did have in the room, I had, I walked into the room, there was a bed on the right hand side, a single bed, there was a window with curtains, there I don't remember there might have been a side table to the bed I don't know but the bed was against the wall in the corner the wall was did the corner the wall was led towards the corner as did the other wall where they met that was the corner bit there was a table and a chair and I can't remember if there was a wardrobe huh. unless that was there was definitely There was a, a cupboard on the other side of the wall, the other side of the room, and I can't remember. Because I know there was an electric meter which took 50 pences, and I had no central heating 
in the room. They <laughs> wouldn't believe this. I don't think they'd uh, get away with it today. But what the, what she did have, or what I did have, was a bathroom heater. A bathroom heater on the wall. And eventually that broke. I think after about a couple of years, so I ended up getting another, getting myself a little heater that I plugged in. But Yeah, it was a weird place to live. It was okay. I didn't really, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really want much for myself. That was, I just uh, somewhere to sleep really. And I used to go out. I'd work. And I'd be going to comedy clubs and yeah, it was okay. It almost seems like a, a lifetime away, but I suppose in a way it is, isn't it? Because I left that house in nineteen ninety four. Which is what twenty five years ago, and the room next to me, the the other room, it rarely had anyone living there. In fact, I only remember two people living there in that room and one didn't live there for he didn't stay for long and the other one moved in in about 93 and yeah kind of took over the house this is uh kind of funny he's yeah very very unusual person but then I moved out and that was good but it's quite a quiet house It's a bit like this place. Well, it isn't, you know, especially this time of night, it's quiet. And I like that, I do. I like that peacefulness. I mean, sometimes I, I will sit here and just enjoy the quiet. Sometimes I work on my website, but with no music and no background, no radio, no audio tape, anything like that. Audio tape, like an audio book. It's peaceful. The only thing is when I sit down on my chair and I lay back, I can just fall asleep so easily. The same as when I'm lying down on my bed. Falling asleep is just, 
This is the most natural thing in the world. Just, just automatic, you know. Automatic slumber, which is quite nice. Just to let go and just to enjoy feeling relaxed. So the point of the story was Quite often after work, I'd come home and I'd go to the news agents and I'd get a Frogo chocolate bar. Because I liked them. And they tasted yummy, which was always, always helps. Just so easily just drift off hmm. just fall asleep. There's a lot to be said about just just closing your eyes and just sitting there or just lying there obviously not if you're driving a car but you know if you're just sitting in a chair not if you're at work you know if you're working in an office but when you're at home and nothing needs your attention and And just, it's almost like getting in touch with yourself, getting in touch with that, that part of you that's inside you, that feeling of safety. that's protected a place where you can go emotionally and know that you'll always be safe and falling asleep is the most natural thing in the world it's 
It's a lovely feeling. It's almost almost like meditating but without without any focus without the need for any focus yet that focus is wide a wide focus just on being you know without sounding all spiritual and stuff just being in the moment, enjoying, feeling relaxed and calm. It's one of my it's one of my favourite feelings. It really is. And I I do like to share that with you. And I know it might sound a bit weird. What I say next might sound a bit strange, but... The thing is... I almost feel like... The level of relaxation that I'm experiencing... And the tiredness and comfort is being shared with you as you listen and that sense of well-being spreads to everybody that's listening Now, I like that. Feels nice. So I should say goodbye for today. And I will speak to you very soon. So remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.